the lights on. Oh my word, what do you think of those? Liking them all, huh? Morning, everybody. So Monday morning, love Mondays, busy week ahead. Every daily vlog, Monday to Friday, this week's is coming to you from the Adam Young Practice Manual. I'm gonna give one of these away every video. Today, if you wanna win the Adam Young Practice Manual, one of my youngest, three levels of, will choose from my Instagram followers. So make sure you follow me on Instagram for a chance to win this. Yeah. At Crossfield Mark on Instagram. Mm, caramel time. So Friday's question, who would win the Arnold Palmer Invitational? Didn't see many of you picking Mark Leishman. That's definitely who I would have chosen all day long. So today's question, to hit that comment section up with down there. What is the average driving distance in the amateur game? So there's been studies done. What are the average driving distance for the amateur game? Plenty of long balls out there. They really seem to be longer in forums and on Twitter, don't they? take a look at today's swing. I've got it on the right here, obviously Thomas Peters on the left. Um, what we're going to focus on is what he does on the camera here visually with his hands as a reference point, but then it's going to relate to maybe some shaft angle on the way down, also it's going to relate to body movements on the way down. Struggles from pull shots he says, so his path is obviously going left. Um, look, Thomas Peters on the back swing. Pretty straight, extended left arm, and his hands hit that Audi sign there, look. Now, top of the back swing as well, look, the club goes near the top of the screen, so highest point of the club is near the top of the screen there, look. If we take our pupil back, furthest point back is kind of just behind this person behind him. Club gets also to the top of the screen. Now, when he starts down, his hands are almost more extended than where they went back, so more behind him. Uh, and the club again is near the top of the screen. Now watch Thomas Peters. The head of the club is nowhere near the top of the screen now. So that club is laying behind him, which is that kind of 2D lag thing that people get confused by. So he's laying the shaft further behind him. And look how further across his hands are. So for you, having your hands further back, having the shaft more pitched up in the air, is a great way of getting your kind of path moving left. And with the hands uh, and the face moving the way it seems to want to move on the way down, if I can show this here, um, you know, there seems to be no kind of holding off of faces. The face wants to naturally turn over, which is a nice thing. We need to get your path going more right. Morning, bro. All right. Uh, Mark Leishman, eh? Everyone called that. That was everyone was calling Leishman as the winner. <laughs> I didn't watch any of it. Sliding weights and no weights <laughs> at the moment. So first idea is here, I'm going to use my trusty bookcase. So I'm going to stand in a position where if I make my regular back swing, so here, my hands just brush the bookcase. So they're literally just touching the bookcase. Then what I'm going to do, top of my back swing turn, as I start my down swing, I'm going to feel like my weight pressure moves forward. I'm going to feel like there's a lateral shift that way, which as I bring my hands down, you're going to see now there's a gap between the bookcase and my hands. This is what we weren't seeing from your movement. We were seeing you turning around those same angles you were making on the backswing. This is going to be great for you shifting your pressures forward, feeling that shift and how that relates to your downswing. And by simply having that arc or that club turning a bit more this side of you, it's going to make it easier for you to push the path straight away more to the right. Simple idea, brush the bookcase on the way back and move away from the bookcase as you start down. Remember, you've got to put some turn into it, otherwise you're gonna find everything just stays out to the right. So there's shift and turn, and you can do it almost simultaneously if you want on the downswing. It's just more that you get your hands away from the bookcase. Also, as you do this, if you can angle your thumbs, so you can see my two thumbs as I do my imaginary grip, more towards this back wall as well, because that's going to give you the feeling of laying that shaft down as you do this. Sinking all those pieces up is going to be the answer for you hitting better shots and getting rid of that pull shot. But we will do more on laying the shaft down later on today. Let's answer your questions. Morning, bro. Morning. Let's go run with Eldest. Hello, Eldest. Hello. Hello. <laughs> My question is this. 
So I spent a long time on and off of the game of golf, played at single figures, currently um, playing very badly, shooting in the high hundreds, 110, 120s. Uh, my question to you would be this, in order to rebuild a golf game, where would you start? Would you start on the range with a pitching wedge? Would you practice putting? Uh, obviously have some lessons, um, because that's embarrassing for me at the moment. I don't want to set foot onto a course. So um, how would you go about rebuilding a golf game? Thanks, bro. Keep up the great work. Bye-bye. What an interesting question. So I would seriously get some lessons, and it's going to have to be with someone that you can really connect with, because it's going to be a battle of your game and a bit of a battle of your emotions because you're going to have to reassess what you want from golf. So I've kind of gone through the same process. So I played golf intensely from 12 to about 22 and then I got into coaching and travelling became boring and I got frustrated with not wanting to practice so I would play not to the standard I knew I could play at. And what got me back into loving playing golf is actually making these videos because we get to go to great places, I get to choose who I play with all the time and I don't care if I'm competitive or not, I'm playing for the experience and to hopefully help the viewers understand what you should play like on the course as we're all really ledger golfers which is kind of what I am now as well. So for me the biggest difference was changing my mentality and what my goals were and changing them allowed me to completely enjoy golf again. In a way similar to I remember I did when I was a kid to be honest. So definitely it's going to be lessons with someone who can help you emotionally plus technically because to go from the level you've been at to the level you're doing now you're obviously beating yourself up inside probably thinking about stopping playing altogether and to do that that is going to be a shame. So it's going to be about trying to get you to control your emotions, understand what negative effect they can have on your life, let alone just go. You know, it's that kind of play rubbish, go home the weekend, you're a bit grumpy kind of stuff. It's not fair on everyone, is it? Changing your mentality around what you want from golf would be the main thing I would advise someone like you. Let me know if this helps. It's lunchtime. Lovely. So next idea, now you've got your pressure moving forward, is about imagining there is a false roof above you. So I say to students, I want you to feel like you're hitting the roof on the way back, so feel like the club does go up in the air, but then on a downswing, obviously you're pushing your pressures forward, but feel like you're dropping that club down in a way where it wouldn't go anywhere near that roof. So I asked them to think about a roof on the way back, and then as they start the downswing, to imagine that the roof now has dropped, almost down to kind of around their head height. And they need to feel like they're pulling the club down to anywhere near the ball while not hitting that new roof height. So up to the top, hit the roof now. The roof's about where my head height is, so I want them to feel like they're dropping the club literally down their back as their pressures go forward and still turning and spin that club out to the imaginary ball and hit a shot. This concept of how high the club goes to it then coming lower is fantastic for getting people to feel like laying the shaft down on that downswing. I do it with loads of students and it seems to really connect with them. Always in their practice swings, you see them make a transformed movement within one practice swing with this idea. They don't always take that to their first swing, but the fact that they can do it in their first practice swing just straight away gives me confidence to know that they can go home, go to a range, use this idea, and if they do it enough, it will change their patterns. the football. Oh, stuff in his face. Wait. Right, it's Monday night and it's football right. night and again getting lighter, which is always a treat. Remember to follow my Instagram at Crossroad Mark if you want a chance to win Adam Young's practice manual, one available every day this week, Monday to Friday. See you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up sign down there and don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button as well. See you all tomorrow. Best shoes ever. Yeah. <laughs>